So I think it's finally time to admit what the Switch is, and that is Nintendo's most successful console that they've released. That's right, it is May 23rd, and barring something absolutely crazy like Game Vice winning their lawsuit and keeping Nintendo from being able to sell the Switch system anymore, I think the Switch will not only pass the Wii's hardware units sold, I think at this point it's getting closer to being able to say that it will also pass its software units sold. I think it's safer to say that they'll be able to pass the hardware units of 101 million, making the Switch Nintendo's best-selling piece of hardware for the home console market, for them anyway. Um, but I, I think I think they'll be able to pass the software and be Nintendo's first 1 billion unit seller in terms of software units. That's something they weren't able to do with the Wii or the DS. Yeah, so the, the Switch would be able to outsell the Wii in terms of hardware and then outsell the DS in terms of software. And you might be wondering why I'm saying that now. Well, Nintendo said that they feel like they are getting close to being halfway through the Switch's lifespan. And the way they said it makes me believe that, one, it'll be very similar to how the 3DS is having its send-off, which is that it's it's still out there for some reason, and it's been a long time. And two, I think Nintendo might try to get seven years out of the Switch. I do. Uh, those things, of course, just uh, just add to the idea of it being able to pass the Wii because the more time the Switch has on the market, obviously the better chance it has to sell more software and more hardware, but it's also going to come down to Nintendo's first-party support trying to kind of level off the, uh, the crash that the Wii saw at the end because after like five years, the Wii just like crashed through the floor and just stopped selling like completely. But the MPD numbers came out. Strangely, we had hard numbers, but we also had a lot of information and insight as to what's happened in April. And I think this is a boost that Nintendo wasn't necessarily expecting. You really can't rely on what happened here in April to be the rest of the way, but it gives them a nice head start and a nice jump into this current fiscal year. So let's go over that here. So in April, the spending across video game hardware, software accessories, the whole pool basically, even including game cards, little things you buy at Walmart, $1.5 billion, that's 73% higher when compared to last April in 2019, and that is a new record high in reported spend for an April month. That does eclipse, according to MPD, the April of 2008, and that was $1.2 billion, so that was actually quite a bit for an April. Now, on the software side, we saw Final Fantasy VII Remake as number one, Call of Duty as number two, and then we saw Animal Crossing as Three. So Animal Crossing is still up there, despite it only tracking physical sales. Nintendo does not share their software side, which is a shame because I would be curious to see how Animal Crossing would be tracking if the eShop sales were involved, considering a lot of people are, of course, at home and may not even be going out to buy Animal Crossing. Now, getting down to the hardware sales, that's what really caught people off guard here. It was way more than I think anyone was expecting, so much so that when the actual numbers got out there, People couldn't really believe it, like it was that much. But the MPD did tell us that it actually grew 163% from last April, so it was already up a, a massive amount. The Switch was the top selling system in terms of hardware units and dollar spend, so just everything across the board there. But then Daniel Ahmed went ahead and tweeted out the number of units sold. And uh, well, take a look at this. This apparently came from Media Play News, but then they cite Michael Pactor because he wanted to talk about his predictions. And then he, I guess he was like, hey, here are the actual numbers compared to my predictions, apparently. But I will say Daniel Ahmed, has, he should have access to the, act, the numbers. So he probably looked at this and said, oh, okay, yeah, I'll just share that out and we'll just cite Media Play News, fine. Uh, but we can see at the top, the Switch sold 808,000 units in April in the U.S. alone. Yeah, that that is a lot for an April. Like, we would expect maybe a little more even for a holiday month, but April? No, like the PS4 at 411,000 is really high for that as well. And the Xbox One at 329,000 is also very high. I mean, think about in what, six months, the next platform will be out for both of them, the PS5 and the Series X. And like the Xbox One selling over 300,000 units in April. Now look, it's, it's pretty obvious why it did so well. People are inside, they're looking for things to do. They're going out there buying game systems when they're out, you know, buying essential items, right? At Walmart, of course. Uh, but 
Now we kind of look towards the future here because the Switch last reported was at 55.77 million. That was at the end of March. That doesn't account for anything going on in April or even May at this time. So we're probably going to see a pretty big jump and big head start for the fiscal year where Nintendo was uh, forecasting roughly 19 million more units, which by the way, that means that at the end of next March, they would be just about matching the 3DS. There's a good chance that based on how things have started this year, that by the end of next March, they will have passed the 3DS and that would have been done in four years. Now, if we go over to Nintendo's financial page, they do tell us all about, of course, the software and hardware sales for all of their systems, even back to like the Game Boy. They're pretty transparent with all of their figures. And you can see the Switch and the 3DS as their current platforms right there at the top. But we can also take a look at the Wii as well. Now, the Wii is at 101.63 million units. The software is at 921.69 to the right of that, 154 million units for the DS, and then 948 million units for the software. So neither of them could get over the, the last like 80 to, to, to 70 million units to, of software to get to that 1 billion mark. The Switch currently is at 356 million units for software. And you might be thinking, well, hold on. That means that they are pretty far off from a billion units sold. And they technically are. But the biggest thing here to remember is that as we go along, software unit sales will accrue and should kind of go up more exponential compared to the hardware sales as you expect to sell more than one software piece to every person who buys a piece of hardware. Like you're not looking to do basically what the Wii did at first, which was sell Wii Sports technically to somebody with the Wii. I mean, seriously, Nintendo fudged the numbers with the Wii when it comes to software and they still couldn't get to a billion units. They counted like 82 million units of Wii Sports in that large 921 million unit number. And like Wii Sports came with the system. And the Switch has something kind of interesting happening right now. We've heard Nintendo mention to investors evergreen titles. They say that all the time. The Switch is really benefiting from some of these older titles, I guess you'd say. Games that came out basically when the Switch came out. If you look back at this last fiscal quarter, Animal Crossing was the best-selling game for that period of time. That makes sense. It exploded out of the gate. They told us updated numbers closer to when they were talking to investors of like 13.5 million units. It was crazy stuff, right? But if you take Animal Crossing away and you had to guess what the next best-selling game is... You might not say Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. That game came out like a month or two after the Switch came out. But it was. It sold millions of units in that fiscal quarter. Basically, it seems that when someone buys a Switch for Animal Crossing, maybe, they also buy Mario Kart 8 Deluxe or they buy Breath of the Wild. These are all games that continue to sell over a million units or close to a million units every time we get a new fiscal report for each quarter. Essentially, these evergreen titles are still selling Switch systems. It's interesting. It's something that you wouldn't necessarily expect as we're used to games coming out, going on heavy discounts, and then kind of being forgotten about and not really being system sellers. But even now, Mario Kart still sells Switch systems despite it being three years old. The biggest thing that the Switch seems to have done, and I think it's the part that will catapult them past the 100 million mark for hardware sold, is the fact that the library is pretty diverse to the point where they've managed to pull in the casual audience that they really benefited from with the Wii, and then also pulled in the hardcore gamer as well. On one side, there's like Xenoblade and Fire Emblem and No More Heroes is coming up. Oh, and then Bayonetta and what's that? Metroid Prime. Oh, okay, that was good. But then on the other side, you have Mario Kart. You have Animal Crossing. You could even say Mario Odyssey. That's really benefited from the casual audience that recognize Mario. It's very interesting to see all of these games come together in a pretty diverse library in order to push this system forward. But now, according to Nintendo, we're halfway through the life of the Switch, and this is where their decisions are going to be very, very key if they really do want that big 100 million milestone, okay, for hardware. Software will come with the hardware because Nintendo is known for their first-party titles, and as long as they continue what they've already been doing, which is pushing out these big-time games that sell really well, they'll be fine. They seem to continue pushing up that hardware. So number one, obviously, 
they got to win that lawsuit against Game Vice. Because you can't sell Switches, you're in trouble. No, seriously. Uh, number one, I think the Switch has to get cheaper. It sounds weird because it's already $200 like already with the Switch Lite. But I think if they can get it down to $150, they would be in much better shape. And I think the way they can do that is if they just go with a TV set-top box. Base. A li little set-top box uh, that they call, I don't know, the Switch TV or something. Or just name it something different. Comes with a Pro Controller. And it's $150. I know it's a switch that doesn't switch, but you may already own one of those. It's called the Switch Lite. Also, the way that Nintendo was calling the Switch as more of an overall brand and family of systems and devices, I feel like they weren't just saying that because they only have two devices planned. I think they want to continue going in the direction of cheaper, more affordable, and more accessible to people. And in order to do that, you got to put out something that cuts off quite a few of the features. And one of those will probably be the screen and the portability aspect that kind of resulting in their own version of like the PlayStation TV. So that's for the hardware side. Now for the software side, I mean, the biggest thing is you got to pull in some of the third parties. And I know people don't want to hear, oh, we don't need Madden. You don't, you don't need FIFA. Like these are games that people buy every single year and these games sell tens of millions of copies and it continues to add on to those software numbers. It is the biggest reason that Sony has been able to sell multiple generations of 1 billion units of software. That's that's the biggest reason. If they didn't have the, the third parties like that, they wouldn't be. So Nintendo really needs to figure out that whole thing with EA and I kind of feel like they might... Like, Madden should be on the Switch, right? FIFA should be on the Switch, but better. It's on the Switch, but it's terrible, right? It should be just the straight-up version of FIFA, like, outright. You know, NHL should be there. All of those should be straight-up and expected. That would, of course, help with the software sales. So, I am very interested to see Nintendo push forward with the back half of the Switch's life. That's when you you feel like you should see developers, third party and first party, come out with games that are specific to the system. I think a new Mario Kart, Breath of the Wild 2, that'd be another big one. And of course, let's not forget about Pokemon. There very well could be two more big Pokemon releases left for the Switch. And then a 3D Mario would work to really push the Switch past the Wii. I think if they get those all out and done, and then anything else like Metroid Prime 4, which I'll just say it, Metroid Prime 4 isn't going to light the world on fire in terms of sales. It'll make me really happy, and I'll buy a collector's edition because I'm sure the Switch would look awesome, but it's not going to go out and sell 10 to 15 million units. It just never has, right? The Metroid Prime franchise isn't a big seller. But you throw in that, maybe you throw in a new Pikmin, and you start going through some of the catalog of IPs they have, and yeah, I think we get to a point where we're saying goodbye to the Switch, and it is their best-selling console, their most successful console overall, passing the Wii, and hey, maybe even the DS, you never know, 1 billion units of software, it's, I would say that'd be more successful than what the DS was even able to do. But let me know what you guys think about this one down below. Make sure you like the video on the way out if you enjoyed it, guys. Dislike it if not, and I'll see you next time.